As we highlight Black History Month, we take a look at the life of Sojourner Truth, an enslaved African-American evangelist, abolitionist, women's rights activist, and author who lived for a short time in nearby Florence, Massachusetts. Her story is told as part of a walking tour held each year in that town on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. This year's walk had to be canceled due to the cold temperatures, but Connecting Point producer Dave Fraser shares her story with us tonight. She had a gift. She had a gift for speech and she had a gift for singing. And she used that gift. Like we know people today who have that gift. She became a public speaker and that whole part of her life really started here in Florence. She, of course, was fighting against slavery, but she got so much encouragement here, and she began to be asked to go from here to speak in Worcester. So she was at one of the first women's rights conventions in our whole country. Then they, she was asked to speak in New York State, and slowly but surely, she was asked to speak all over uh, what was our country at that time. Well, the walk that we have every year is for the Martin Luther King Day celebration that was started by the American Friends Service Committee. Well, most of them are surprised that this history exists in this tiny place and that so many important people in the abolitionist movement, friends of Sojourners, uh, David Ruggles, Frederick Douglass, William Lloyd Garrison, Lydia Mariah Child, these are prominent figures in the abolition movement and for some reason they made it here to this little village of Florence. Samuel L. Hill, whose house is on the tour, which was also a station on the Underground Railroad, and what he did was establish the industrial village of Florence. They invented the tri triple twist silk here, which allowed Singer's sewing machines to, to operate without jamming as much as they had. So that was a, became a big industry. One of the very earliest plastics was invented in Florence. And people around the valley all have, know about Pro Brush Company. And those brushes were made of this Florence early plastic uh, in the old days. And then we also, uh, in February, celebrate uh, the death day of Basil Dorsey, who was Florence's longest tenured uh, former slave, who was a, uh, a teamster for the mills here. We have taken on, as the David Ruggles Center and as the Sojourner Committee, to try and interpret that history for folks and explain why they came here. It's really began down at the river, down from where we are. We're up the hill, as it were, and under the hill were uh, homes of uh, former slaves who worked in the mills there. By 1850, Florence was 10% African American. Sojourner walked through this neighborhood. Her house is a block and a half away from here. She owned a house. And for a woman who was born a slave, which means that her diet was probably pretty bad, she was very strong, did a, did a lot of work as a, an enslaved person. So when I moved back here and found out about the statue was just finishing, I was very excited to be in this area of early women's history and the early history of trying to end slavery in our country. The statue was dedicated and put up in 2002. It's the whole effort to put a statue up here in Florence started in about 1993 right after the Rodney King incident in Los Angeles. Our local community wanted to do, make some kind of a symbolic statement about their extreme dislike of racism in our culture and in our country. Most kids who grew up here in Florence and in Northampton didn't hear any of this history. It wasn't taught. So you have a big hole to fill and filling it is, is a joyous process. 